what's going on guys so you decided to join the army and right now you're doing the exact same thing that I did before I joined I was looking at my stuff I joined as a PFC and I was looking at uh, I was googling online basically you know how long is it gonna take me to rank up to specialist how long is it gonna take me to rank up to sergeant and in this video I'm going to talk to you guys about how to actually rank up fast and whether or not it's even possible So is it even possible to rank up faster than what you can find in the regulations and stuff like that? Um, for example here, let's say you guys start out as an E1 private, which has no insignia or anything like that. You're at the bottom of the totem pole. Um, so basically to become an E2, you're going to need basically six months time and grade. And basically that's the exact same thing as time and service. So if you're starting out as an E1, you're going to have zero time and service and you'll be able to rank up to E2 um, within six months. So that's kind of just a guaranteed thing. Um, now you can rank up faster than that and I'll talk about how you can do that later on. But again, for example, let's say you join as an E2. Normally to rank up um, to a private first class, you're gonna need 12 months time in service and four months uh, time in grade. Time in grade, all that means is you spent the that amount of time the rank lower than that so it, whenever it says here four months time and grade to rank up to a pfc that means you've spent at least four months as a e2 private and you need at least 12 months time and service now in order to rank up you have to meet both of these criteria right just because you have five months time and grade and five months time and service that doesn't mean you're going to rank up automatically you will have to hit that 12 months time in service right so if you join as an e2 and you have done nothing special or anything like that you're not going to rank up to a private first class or e3 until 12 months or one year later because you have to meet both of those standards of time and grade and time in service now to go up to a specialist you're gonna need six months time and grade and 24 months time in service so that's two years time in service you're gonna have to meet both of those requirements to meet that standard now once you get up to um, trying to rank up to sergeant and higher than that I'm not really gonna go I'm not really gonna go into past sergeant because I don't have as much experience with that even though some of the things apply but to rank up to sergeant and stuff like that you have to go to BLC and then E6 is like WLC I believe which are basically these courses that you have to go to um, leadership courses to actually become that rank like it used to not be mandatory and you could for example become a sergeant after um, or before you actually take the BLC course where you learn about how to be a sergeant and stuff like that but now it is um, and you guys can correct me wrong correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section but now it is like the standard you have to complete this course before becoming a sergeant so um, it doesn't matter what your time and grade time and service is if you haven't completed this then you're not going to rank up into the NCO ranks right um, but real quick here basically um, to become a sergeant what they're looking for is eight months time and grade and it says here 36 months time in service so you're gonna need to spend at least eight months as a specialist or a corporal and you're going to have to have at least three years time in service so let's say you join as an E4 specialist and uh, you don't do anything special again and you're trying to figure out how long is it going to take me to become a sergeant well according to this it's going to take you about three years which is a pretty long time now this is the point in the video where I'm going to talk to you guys about how to actually rank up fast. So I covered the first little bit of um, how long it's going to take you to rank up if you do it um, the non-high speed way and you're, you're not really proactive about things. So um, what do you need to do to rank up? So there's one way you can rank up um, automatically right off the bat and that is at basic training. So they will do promotions at basic training. They don't do promotions at AIT unless you're uh, time and service and all that stuff. So unless your AIT is past that six month mark, you're automatically going to be uh, promoted to an E2 if you were an E1, for example. But at basic training, they will pick E1s and E2s to be promoted to the next rank. Um, whenever I was at basic training, I was a PFC. 
they do not promote PFCs to specialists, or else I would have been promoted. But uh, I'm not saying that to be cocky or anything, but I would have been promoted um, to specialist, and I was told by my drill sergeant and stuff that they don't allow um, PFCs to be promoted, or else I would have been promoted. Um, but anyway, so that's one way you can do it ahead of time. So basic training is like three months, basically. So you're getting promoted three months early if you're an E1. And if you're lucky enough to be an E2 to get promoted to PFC, you're going to get promoted, what is that, nine months early. So that's really, really good. And so one of the ways that you can, or that's one of the ways you can get promoted quickly. And the way that happens is by being a good soldier. And that's kind of the underlying theme that I want to get across to you guys. So. Um, whenever you're going in, you kind of have to look at yourself and be like, am I going to be that guy who goes the extra mile, that does the extra stuff, that volunteers whenever my sergeants and NCOs and people ask me to do things, am I going to be the one that volunteers to do that? Am I going to have a good PT score? Because that is involved with it, right? So at basic training, if you have a crappy PT score, the odds of you uh, being promoted as one of those promotional or you know guys um, is going to be a lot lower. So you'd have to be really outstanding at these other things, or uh, maybe you are a really good leader at basic training, you could get promoted for that. But um, if you're a PFC, that sucks. So there's really nothing you can do if you're a PFC um, at basic and AIT to get promoted. Now, once you get into the real army, whether it's active duty reserves or National Guard, there's a couple things that you guys can do to rank up faster than normal and faster than. Um, what it says here on the paper. So even if you were that special guy who got promoted to E2 quickly at basic training, these things can still apply to you guys and you should take these throughout your whole military career and try to apply them. So first thing is you gotta be a good soldier, you gotta volunteer, right? I've already talked a little bit about that. The next thing is you need to go to boards. And what boards are, those are um, basically like competitions on your knowledge and stuff like that. So you'll be, um, asked to go in front of a board and when you go in front of a board it is not like a board it is basically a panel of higher up so depending on the level that you're going to the board it could just be your first sergeant and other in higher up NCOs or it could be sergeant majors it could be a whole bunch of first sergeants it could be a bunch of command sergeant majors it depends on the level of the board you go to but the reason I say that is number one to go to be a sergeant, you've got to go to a board, right? And you got to pass the board. So the most, ex the more experience you can get um, with the lower level stuff, the um, non kind of do or die kind of thing, just the more experience you can get um, will really help you out whenever you go to the board to become a sergeant. Now these things help as well because it puts you on the radar of your first sergeant, of your company commander, of the people that matter right if you just kind of fly under the radar like you did at basic like i tried to do it didn't work out but if you just fly under the radar for your whole military career and you don't do anything that shows that you know i'm a good soldier i'm doing this i'm trying to work hard and i'm trying to be proactive um if you don't do anything it's gonna be hard for you to get promoted quickly so let's say you go to all these boards and you win a couple of them let's say you win a soldier of the year board Let's say you win a soldier of the quarter, soldier of the cycle, soldier of the whatever board. If you win one of these things, it doesn't even matter if you win it, honestly. If you don't even, let's say, if you don't even win the board, um, just the fact that your first sergeant knows that you went to this board, um, it gives you a whole lot better chance because what will happen is later on, even for going to schools like airborne school, airsoft school, whatever school, right? Um, you're going to be the first person on your first sergeant's mind whenever the company commander or whatever comes over and says, hey, you know, do you have any guys that would like to go to airborne school, right? So you've been talking with the first sergeant or you've been doing these boards. He's interviewed you because it's basically like an interview, uh, what a board is. I don't know. I can't even remember if I went in depth on that. Sorry about the, the rambling in this. My mind kind of just went everywhere just then, but... Um, on a board, it's kind of like an interview asking you questions and stuff like that. So let's say your first sergeant was on one of your boards and he knew private so-and-so was, he really knew his stuff and he was really good um, and he wants to recommend him to go to airborne school, right? That's a good opportunity for you. The other thing is if you win the boards, if you do those things, you can get promoted early for winning a board. So uh, one of the things that you might look up 
is you got different uh, times that you can get promoted automatically versus getting promoted with like a waiver, right? So getting promoted with a waiver could be, you know, going to a board, soldier of the cycle, soldier of the quarter or whatever. Um, and if you win that, you could get promoted early literally just because of that. So you definitely, you guys definitely want to go to these boards because even though you might win a medal, you might win an army achievement medal, you might win a, a certificate of achievement, a little certificate, which are just, which are points added on to you. Um, but there's, there's just a lot of good things. So the one, number one is experience going to boards. Number two is being on the radar of your higher ups, right? Um, that's a really, really big deal in order to get promoted early. early. Um, and the other thing is, is you can get promoted if you win. So if you win these boards, let's say you go to three or four of them and you lose the first couple, doesn't matter, you got some experience. And then the next one you go to, uh, you so end up winning it. Ways that you, you get, get promoted, promoted early. That Again, that's a being very, proactive very and volunteering for stuff. And one of these ways that I got promoted early was by doing the best warrior competition. So if you guys don't know what the best warrior competition is, you can kind of look up videos and stuff on that. Um, I do want to make a video on it sometime in the future, but this is one of the ways that I got promoted promoted a year early from PFC to specialist, a year ahead of the time and service, um, was because I went to this competition and I won it and then I won the next level and stuff like that. So um, the best warrior competition, for example, is a competition where um, you go and you compete against older, other soldiers at the battalion level, at the brigade level. I went to the, uh, was it, yeah, I think I went to the division level and I ended up winning that one. But I got promoted after I won the brigade level competition. So once I went to this competition and I won it, number one, I got an Army Achievement Medal for winning the, uh, the competition. I got a trophy and stuff like that. The other thing was, is whenever I got back to my unit, like my commanders, they, everybody was so proud and everything that they promoted me from PFC to specialist when I was at literally a year and like a couple weeks of time in service, right? So I'd had basically a year time in grade as a, pre a PFC because I went in as that. And then I had a year of time in service, which if you guys look, to become a specialist, you need 24 months of time and service. And I got promoted way early because I was proactive and I, I requested, I was like, hey, I remember hearing about this best warrior competition. I was like, is that something that's going on? And they were like, yeah, you know, we can sign you up for it. We can put you in on that. And so I was proactive asking about opportunities for myself. And then I ended up winning. My unit was proud of me. They promoted me to specialist a freaking year early, which is a really big deal because the pay increase of getting promoted is like it's pretty big so let's think of i don't know let's say one of you guys get promoted a year early as well you know that's almost like winning a thousand dollars or whatever the the price jump is it's like winning money in a way because something that you did got you promoted early so that's something to take into consideration whenever you guys are trying to get promoted so the last thing that i want to talk about in this video or the last thing about how to get promoted early, I've kind of covered it a little bit, but that is your PT score, right? So your PT score is gonna play a big part in getting selected for anything, right? So I've talked about it in some of my past videos, but if you haven't seen any of them, um, one of the ways people, your higher ups, your first sergeants of people, they or your squad leader, how they pick people a lot of the time is literally just by going off of your PT score, right? So they'll say they just pick you know, these five people that have a 300 or whatever, like the highest five people with, or the people with the five highest PT scores to do something, to go to some competition, to go to some school, or to like get promoted or something for some reason. So if they decide to promote you off a PT score, which I don't know why they would exactly for just a PT score, for example, but you know, it's always a good thing to have as high of a PT score as you can because it really looks good on you. And one of the reasons it looks good on you, not just because you're physically fit, it's because whenever you have a high PT score, you don't get that from just doing the normal PT in the mornings. And so whenever you get a 300 on your PT test, your higher ups know that you've been working hard and you've been proactive with your physical fitness and you've been you know, doing things outside of the standard. So you've been exceeding the standard 
Um, and that's something really, really good and something to keep in mind, again, whenever you're thinking about getting promoted. Because um, if you're in a horrible shape and you're barely passing the PT test, odds are you're not going to get promoted early, even if you know you do these boards and stuff like that because they might ask you literally I've been asked you know what's your PT score so they you go to a board and a sergeant major asks you what's your PT score you don't want to tell him 180 right which after AIT and everything that's the minimum you don't want to tell him you know that you failed your last PT test you don't want to do that because that looks bad on you but it looks really good whenever you can tell them yeah I scored a 300 on my last PT test I maxed the thing out that's really really good um, and it really, really looks good on you. So uh, that's basically it. Really, the only other thing would basically be just be a good soldier and be proactive. So being proactive, looking for opportunities to do things, kind of, um, you don't want to be like a suck up. You don't want to be kind of like that. You just want to do stuff. You want to get as much out of the military as you can. So for example, whenever I won that uh, division level um, best warrior competition, I got to go to Florida. I got like a free paid trip. Like they paid me to go to Florida and go to an army ball. That was freaking awesome. So whenever you do things, you will get rewarded and the rewards are freaking awesome sometimes. Like I got a, I got a sword. Like who freaking gets a sword? One of my awards was, in a, was a sword. Like a legit sword. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome. I'll probably show you guys one time in the video. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it answers some of your questions. So on how to get promoted if it's possible which it is it is possible to get promoted early you can't like get promoted to sergeant after like six months though that's kind of ridiculous um, but it is possible to rank up faster than you can find online but you have to be proactive about it so I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please like it subscribe if you want to come back and watch all these amazing videos later on um, so do that it'll be awesome comment any questions you guys have down below and I'll see you guys later. Drop.